Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you, Mr. Chairman, for holding this hearing. Thank you, Ranking Member. I think it's important that we're having a bipartisan conversation about how to improve health care uh, instead of destroy health care in America. But at the same time that we're having this conversation, President Trump is actively working to sabotage our health care system. He's using a lot of different tactics, but two of them include uh, reducing federal help to keep out-of-pocket costs low and cutting 90% of the advertising efforts so that people know about uh, affordable health insurance. So we've talked some about this, so let me just see if I can do this first part quickly. I just want to ask about the first one, withholding the federal dollars that keep costs lower. Commissioner McPeak, are American families better off or worse off if the president refuses to make cost reduction payments? If those payments are not funded, the American uh, consumer is worse off, certainly. Not only the individuals that are eligible for those reduced uh, co-payments and deductible amounts, but the individuals that would have to pay the increased premium dollars from the carriers associated with that lack of funding. Okay. And Commissioner Kreidler, if the government cuts advertising, fewer people will sign up for health insurance, but how does that affect the costs for the people who do sign up for health insurance? You, you want to encourage the people that are probably the least likely to sign up to sign up because they're more likely to be healthier individuals that are now protected. They don't become the free riders in our system that rely on uncompensated care to take care of them. Inadequate as that might be, it adds cost to the system. The more accountable you make the make uh, uh, health care, the, the better it is for all of us. Well, very strong points on both of these. You know, the president has been perfectly clear about what he's doing, sabotaging health care and driving up costs for families. It's petty, and it's going to hurt millions of people. And if he won't stop on his own, then Congress should stop him. But for me, that's just the beginning of what we need to do to really improve health insurance in this country. Secretary Miller, did the ACA put in place any sort of restrictions on how high an insurance company can raise its premiums in a given year? Uh, Senator, I think uh, aside from the fact that in many states we approve those rates. I'm, I'm going to ask you about the states. I'm there about there the are ACA. no restrictions in the ACA. That's right. The ACA makes no restrictions at all, right? But some states impose tough rules to protect consumers and they insist that the insurance companies have their rates approved by the insurance commissioner before those rates can go into effect. So let me ask, Secretary uh, Miller, in the past years, before all the chaos that has come to the markets lately, um, did you let insurers in Pennsylvania charge whatever they wanted for their plans? I did not, Senator. <laughs> you did not. Uh, commissioner Kreidler. I understand that in Washington State, like Pennsylvania, insurance companies have to get permission ahead of time. Do insurers always come up with reasonable premiums the first time around? No, they do not. Someone and, uh, laughed out loud during that. Uh, go ahead. <laughs> we, we apply a very vigorous review. In fact, uh, we're among those states that are the most vigorous. We, in fact, we're recognized by the federal government as being a state that can do that hard review. I think several of us are in that position. Hard review, and I think you have some data on how much you pushed down the one of the most recent uh, uh, premium requests. Uh, we do, and I, I, I'm not going to, I can't remember exactly which one that was, but. Maybe uh, a 30 percent drop in average rates? It was something like that. Yes. All right, good, yeah. good. Um, oh, I should say it the other way. Yeah, 30% drop in average rates. You know, it, the reason I raise this is because letting insurance companies charge whatever they want opens up price gouging. Rate review programs among the various states have saved consumers about $1.5 billion in premium costs in just 2015 alone, in a single year. Unfortunately, not every state is stepping up on this, and the difference is huge. From 2010 to 2013, just that short time period, premium increases in states with the weakest review programs were 10% higher than in states with the strongest review programs. And that's a lot of money that a lot of families paid out. And for me, it just shows the kind of work that we need to do. Right now, 
Medicare restricts premium increases for most beneficiaries, but the ACA doesn't. Medicare has high standards for the Medicare Advantage plans, while the ACA in many cases has lower standards. Medicare and Medicaid plans cover everybody who qualifies. ACA plans can pick and choose who they uh, get in the game with. It, let's be blunt. We can either make these markets work better for consumers, or we can let insurance companies hold people hostage in order to maximize their own profits. So in my view, if we're really serious about trying to make these markets work, we need to talk about the kind of rules that make them work best for consumers. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.